Introducing the Push Me Pull You interactive die. This die features a reverse action pull tab mechanism. Hi, I'm Julie, the creator of this die, and I thought it would be helpful to give you a basic rundown on how to assemble it. This die set includes a thumb notch, a pull tab, and the option to go with a vertical or a landscape layout. In this demonstration, I am going to be using a horizontal or landscape layout. A quarter sheet of cardstock is going to serve as the base for the function of this mechanism. I need to determine where the first slot is going to go, and that is determined on the height of the images I have going back and forth on the front of this card. So once I've determined how much height I need, I can use a T-square to draw a faint pencil line so I know where to position that slot. I have the thumb notch about a half an inch from the bottom of my uh, base layer here, and then I position the slots accordingly so it lines up in this fashion. I also need to determine how high the front panel needs to be to conceal everything that's going on behind it. Once I make a pencil mark and I have the position of the second slot, I can go ahead and tape those down and send those through my die cutting machine so that the cover will conceal everything that's going on behind it. I also die cut two of the pull tabs and glue those together because I was working with a lighter weight of cardstock. I also need something to serve as a belt. And so I'm using a sheet protector that I cut to a half inch by 11 inches in length. I have a ton of those laying around, but you could use Ziploc bags. You could use grocery shopping plastic bags, a dog poo bags. I've heard of people using those for their belts. You could also use a piece of ribbon. Anything that will create this belt and will slide freely is what you need. So I'm going to use a piece of tape here to secure these together. I like to use double-sided sticky tape. And when I connect the two ends together, I want to make sure that I have enough slack that this will move freely back and forth. So I'm not gluing it tightly together. The belt needs to move, and I like to test it like this before I go ahead and trim off the end. I'm also going to need two pieces of acetate or clear crafting plastic that are cut to 3 8 inches wide by 4 inches tall, more or less. I'm going to apply a piece of double-sided sticky tape to the end of each of these, and one will be mounted on the front of this panel towards the right-hand slot and attached to the plastic strip right there. Then I will flip this over to the back side. Now I have already applied foam mounting tape all over the back of this uh, mechanism so that I am not blocking the slot where the one image will be sliding along and I'm not blocking the plastic belt. You want to make sure that where you glue the ends of that plastic belt together are towards that slot there on the right hand side. I'm going to take my second strip of acetate with double-sided sticky tape and mount that right over the top of where that plastic strip was joined. And then I'm going to grab my pull tab and go ahead and mount that right over the top. At this point, I'm ready to secure my pull tab. And I did trim off a little bit off the end there on the right hand side because I have some foam tape there that's serving as a stop gap. And I'm gonna press that firmly into place on top of that acetate post. And you'll notice how my foam tape is positioned and it does not block the path of that pull tab. I'm gonna take that acetate post on the back side and slip it through to the front side of this panel. And when you flip it over, there you'll see you've got both of those posts coming up through the front side, and I'm just testing it to make sure that everything's working properly. Now you can mount this as it is to uh, the front of a base card uh, if you want, but I find my life is so much easier if I take a piece of typing paper and trim it down to cover up that pull tab and just remove a little bit of those liner papers there, and I'll put some tape runner over the top of that before I mount it to my base card. And the reason for that is that it keeps that pull tab from jockeying around and getting trapped in between the foam tape and my A2 base card. So just a word to the wise here, if you have trouble getting those in place without it getting stuck in there, um, that is a really helpful tip and it doesn't add any extra bulk to the card. So now I can go ahead and get that mounted to the front of my card and testing the mechanism to make sure that it works. Now it's time to get the front cover mounted on there. I've added foam tape to the front 
of this mechanism. This is going to give it some elevation and allow that to slide freely. And I'm going to remove the liner papers just partially so I can go ahead and get that mounted. I'm going to take that acetate post on the right and slip it through the slot and then go ahead and get that positioned in place and everything lines up beautifully and I can remove the rest of those liner papers. I'm also going to test this to make sure that everything is functioning properly and at this point you're now ready to mount your images right there on the left and the right and they will reverse action when you pull the tab. Now that we have the basics down, here's how an actual card is going to come together. I've already got my components uh, die cut out, and I'm going to create the background on the main base of the mechanism here because this part is what will be seen on the front of the card. I'm just going to grab the palm trees from the Good Day stamp set, debuting June 11th also, and get those stamped into place. You could sponge a sky, you could put some clouds, do whatever floats your boat. And I decided at this point, this is also where I wanted my sentiment to go. And here's where the pre-planning really comes in handy and helps this just, you'll be cruising along if you just do a little bit of forethought ahead of time as to where you want things positioned. I'm going to secure the belt here and just use a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. Make sure I have some slack so that it slides freely and get that taped into place. And then go ahead and trim off the excess that I don't need anymore. Flip it on the back, add some foam tape, and I'm ready to get my acetate posts into place. Again, I'm going to secure the one on the back side to the right near that slot and slip it through to the front. And then I'll grab my pull tab and get that anchored right over the top of that at the end. And as you can see, I've got my foam tape positioned so that nothing is impeding the movement of that pull tab or that acetate post. Then I can go ahead and pull back some of those liners and get that scrap piece of typing paper. I tell you, this is one of the most genius things I ever thought of. <laughs> as far as uh, making it easier for me to put these together. Just a piece of typing paper. And then add a little bit of tape runner there to replace the adhesive I covered up and mount that to the front of my base card. Get those liner papers removed. And then I can go ahead and get some uh, foam tape mounted to the front of this. As you can see, once again, I'm making sure that I'm not impeding uh, that track or the belt. Get that second acetate post mounted on the front there. And then I'm going to grab my cover panel and slide that acetate post on the right, right through the front of that slot and get that piece mounted into place. Once you have all of these liner papers removed, if you're anything like me, this is a good point at which to test everything and make sure that it's sliding the way you want before you finish it off. And everything's working smoothly. Uh, you could also write a message there on the pull tab and it would be hidden for an extra surprise. I'm going to use some double-sided sticky tape to mount the girl on the convertible in the background onto that uh, acetate post on the left. And then for the girl that's going to be in the foreground, I'm going to add some foam tape to pop her up. Now I only removed the liner paper on the piece that's going to get attached to the acetate post because I just wanted some support foam on her wheels. I'm not going to remove the liner paper there because I want those to be able to glide along the front of the card. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess acetates from the posts behind them. And there we go. You have an interactive reverse action pull tab card that I like to call the push me pull you. Have fun with this die. Thanks for watching.